Hello, my name is Isaac Snow White. I'm a technician at the University of Miami School of Medicine Diabetes Research Institute. And in the link below, I'll include my other videos. We go over uh, installing the software and scanning the sections and setting the gates and all the basic intro stuff. Now we come to the, the last part, the fun part. How do we get all those numbers out of the software? Uh, so this is something where I'm fairly new to the topic and there's a rather extensive collection of tools buried within QPath. But basically, and we're gonna, we're gonna play along with the actual instructions and I'm doing this for two reasons. One, to illustrate that there are actually online uh, instructions which were included as part of the help section of this software under documentation web but also to illustrate that there are, are basically two pathway or well there's three technically but two pathways that are fairly straightforward the first one is let's say we've gone in we've measured everything we now have everything labeled okay there are basic like a lot of these like a lot of software there's like several different ways to do the same basic task the first one is we can either go under we can either go under the measures tab or the measure symbol we're going to stick with measures tab for right now, but essentially it's the same set of choices. If you go under measures tab, you see we have show annotation measurement, which is basically show you, where is it? Oh, there it is. The, uh, the individual image that we're on right now with all the different measurements provides, this is basically the same information that's provided in the hierarchy tab. If you click on the annotation, same information. Um, you could obviously copy this to a clipboard and save it into your, uh, your document. Uh, within each of these tabs, there's actually a second, uh, second choice where you can actually plot the data that's, that's buried within the tab. In this case, it's only one column, so not terribly interesting. But there's a number of options. So let's, let's say you want to do plots of, uh, let's find something more fun. How about area? And it'll plot your data and you can control the number of de demarcations. In this case, like I said, not so exciting because it's only one data point. Um, the next option, you can actually plot the data within the actual uh, section, all the individual points under show detection measurements, which is going to give you a full list of all the measurements made. And if you click on them, either there or in here on the individual images, you can actually try to find each of the cells as they're labeled. Like, uh, I mean, obviously most of these are negative. You're talking about, uh, what is this, a uh, hundred and, or I'm sorry, one, like a little over a million, 1.2 million cells. But if you click on them, it'll actually highlight the band inside the image, although in this case, it may be hard to find given the number of cells. But you get the basic idea, positive, negative, surface area, parameter, everything you would ever want to know. And you could actually save these, so you can plot the files, you can plot all the cells, let's say, let's say you put 64 demarcations in, so we have high resolution. You normalize the data, you can change, let's say uh, the measurement type, you have parameter, circularity, uh, nuclei, we have cells, we have cytoplasm, you could do a cell ratio, cell, sorry, nucleus, cell ratio, so forth and so on, all sorts of fun things. Uh, you can actually clip these images into a, copy and clip this image into a uh, slide or something for presentation, or you can sa save the collective file that had, for the one image under a, as a text format. So you could actually open this in um, and say a file like Excel and it will preserve all the hierarchy. So all the nucleus columns and row data um, listed in the file. And the one thing I see over and over again is that the names it's giving are giving, giving the original image name. Uh, so something to keep in mind for organiza organization's sake that uh, when you go back to look at these under a list, it may be useful to actually know the original file name as well. And finally, probably the easiest way to get your data out of, some, out of a piece of software like this is after you've gone through all your projects. Uh, I'm gonna clip out of this for a second because I want to look at the data. I need to, uh, I need to be out of the file to open it. Hit cancel. We're gonna go to measures. We're going to go to export measure. And from here, it's going to give you a list of a directory. As long as everything's stored in the, in the, as a project, basically all your files that are listed here are listed here. We're going to click on data with file. This is, is it's a, a tab basically that shows the files only that have, have been processed for, uh, for counts basically. 
And uh, in this case, we'll, we'll click on a couple of these. Let's say the first one, the second one, the third one, fourth one, and whatever. And you pick up the data set you want. You hit export. There's the files. Down here, we have several options. You can click on annotations, cell detection cells, TMA cores. For right now, I recommend sticking with uh, annotation because basically this is the individual counts within the file. And I, I recommend using the CSV format if you want to use Excel. Um, there are other options here, but if you try doing something like cell where it stores all the information, these files will become significantly larger. A single file I try to export because you're trying to account for every cell and every measurement of every individual file. These things will quickly grow to be several gigabytes in size and probably very difficult to work with. I'm not even sure if you can open them in, um, in Excel. So anyway, we're going with annotations because we just want to save the numbers for the, for the, the four individual counts. In this case, or here, here we can, we, let's put all of them, sorry, we'll put all of them, just for fun. Put all of them over. And now we're going to go under populate. If you don't do this, it will give you all the data uh, generated by default. You can actually go into this, it takes a second here, and click out the columns and or the columns of information you actually want to export into the file. There, one second, it may take a minute. And so now you can see there's the image name, the names, the images. In this case, say I want the different detection ranges, positive, uh, how about service area, the parameter, whatever. Anyway, so we sit, we click on the choice that we want and we say, oh, of course we have to specify a location. So here you can put in a name and location anywhere on your hard drive, obviously. Um, in this case, I'll put it on my desktop just so I can easy make, easy make it easy to find desktop. And then we'll say, uh, you know, measurements. Okay, save and hit export. And now this will take a minute. It's going to go through each of the files and place them into that text file at the end. So a little patience. Say OK. So now we'll go to that desktop and we'll take measurements. We'll right click on measurements. We'll open with Excel. And so there we go. So there's my, my, uh, my six rows of data. In this case, I limited it. That's my fault. But uh, my six rows of data from the VSI file. Now, again, this is where no one, you may end up having to, and I might actually look into myself, look into reformatting the image names or including another image name alongside this because obviously this is going to be a little messier to organize because it's using, utilizing the machine, uh, the values from the machine output and not my hand-drawn notes. So you can recognize uh, 219, this is a scan date and there's a section number here. So anyway, this is the raw data, the negative positives, and now obviously this is where you jump off and start performing your basic statistical analysis. So just hit save as whatever file format you want and you're done. Now, with that being said, there are several other interesting features I've stumbled upon with, within QPath. So if we were to say, I don't know, click on a section, open it up, Oh, sorry, this is hematoxylin. That's the problem. I'm going to do uh, eosin. So in this case, sorry, I'm try again. Um, in this case, we're looking at uh, eosin staining. We have a lower threshold. The bulk of the tissue, the excrement tissue, isn't going to label, but you can, you can raise the background to sort of cancel that out. Here we can lower the upper threshold, and so you can sort of intensify the color coming from the eosin. And what's fun about this is if you want to see, you could theoretically map out, maybe there's a structural feature where there's more intense staining, or you could pick out something like, um, uh, well, okay, so you look at so the section, sectional area, the extra tissue tends to be uh, uh, larger. So you could, let's, say, let's try uh, nuclear cytoplasm. And so now you can look at like relative, relative size, uh, size and nu nuclear cytoplasm to uh, uh, nucleus size or whatever as a, as a reference. Anyway, you can imagine, you can highlight this in different ways and it makes for a nice presentation. So for example, in this case, it looks like the, uh, the, the was it these, these smaller cells are actually um, extended to the outer, outer edges of the uh, section. The larger excrement tissue 
inside is uh, staying dark. And in this case, it's not a lot interesting, I guess, but the, the, you can see how this might be more interesting. You look at different cell types, if you're say gating on tumor cells or some other tissue where you've predated your stain and label and sort of a way of highlighting a global view of a tissue section. A second feature um, beyond mapping is I noticed within this, now this goes beyond the, the, what we're doing today with the Minnesota chemical, but there's a, under options, you can look under view, you can click under mini viewer, show viewer channels. And so, as I mentioned in the prior slides, you can actually set up many, it looks like 16, or I'm sorry, 15 different channels. In this case, our limitations is primary, or our, our gates are set on something like hematoxylin and eosin. But you can see how the potential for this, you could set up the colors for fluorescent colors like green or red or violet blue or whatever, and then go back and look at, say, things like double staining, for example. Um, so anyway, a lot of fun, a lot of different op options buried within this software. And I highly recommend visiting the website, just in case you aren't clear. The website is listed here under, here, put it here, just so you can stop the video and see it, just in case. It's QPath. And like I said, what's nice about this software is there is a, what looks like very brief collection of content, but actually within this, there's a lot of other things buried in. This, th this GUI or graphics interface is fairly straightforward, but there's actually a whole next level if you want to get into, uh, into writing your own code. Um, anyway, thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful, and I hope this is a useful introduction to how to get your data out once, you got, once you've gone through all the hassle of measuring it. Have a nice day.